everybody. So in video 2090, we talked about creating a constant variable transmission using the idea of a moving fulcrum. And in this video, we're going to make it. Now, in order to make that, I've drawn up this design in Tinkercad. And of course, I'm going to make those files freely available and they'll be on Thingiverse and there'll be a link in the bottom in the description. But you're going to need some extra parts. The extra parts I use are these things. These are 25 millimeters by 6 millimeter stainless steel rods and they're sold as shelf supports. You buy a bag of those on Amazon, so you need a bag of those. These are some bearings. They're 12 millimeters on outside diameter, 6 millimeters on the inside diameter, and 4 millimeters thick. And you're going to need eight of them. You buy them in bags of 10, so you buy a bag of 10. And you're going to need two of these. These are normal skate bearings. They're um, 22 millimeters outside diameter, 8 millimeters inside diameter and seven millimeters thick. So once you've got those parts, then we can start to build the machine. Now, the start of the machine is the base that it all hangs on. It's actually a critical component because it holds everything in relation to each other and makes sure that everything moves in the right direction. So the base for this is made from these parts. And all we have to do is take those parts and glue the slide to the main base, and then the slide itself goes between the two arms and we get that. I mean, there's not a lot to it. This is a bit of 8mm bar. It's 100mm long and it's attached to the slide. The slide has two caps, one either side, because that makes sure that we hold things out where they need to be. And then in that big hole are our two skater bearings and that creates the slide. So when we move that up and down, if we have a point in here, it'll create a moving pivot. And the point in there is going to be these. So we can put those into that to create the point in which our moving pivot will go. And of course, we've also printed this off, which is our pivot arm, and that will hang on there. And as that moves up and down, if this is fixed in relation, so that's moving up and down, then clearly we've got a pivot with a moving fulcrum. Now I'm going to make this double-sided, why not? It's got two sides, so I've got another one there, and I can put another pin into there to make me my double-sided pivot. The pivot arm itself is going to pivot on there, but we put a couple of these onto there so that as that pivots and moves up and down, we have no friction on it. We should have printed four of these capping pieces on. There's the bearings in place. The pivot arm goes on there like that, and then that capping piece also goes on there to stop the pivot falling off. So the pivot can now move up and down on there, or rather the pivot point will move up and down on the arm, and it will swivel, it will be relatively frictionless, and it can't fall off. Now, of course, we want something to drive that, because remember we talked about the input being a rotation from an engine, and us needing to turn into a push-pull. And we chose a Scotch yoke as a mechanism for that. Now, a lot of people had said, well, won't this mechanism do it? And the truth is, yes, it will. Lots and lots of mechanisms, lots and lots of simple machines can be put together, and there are lots of choices to make. And that's the whole point about designing a machine. You're actually making choices. Now, I chose the Scotch yoke because I like the Scotch yoke, and it's obvious what it can do. But that was the only thing. There are other choices you can make, and that's the design process. It's about making choices that are appropriate to what your design objectives are. So we're going to put a Scotch yoke. Now, a Scotch yoke, obviously, needs a slide mechanism. And you'll see right here, there's this little slide guide that the Scotch yoke is going to move in. And we put two of them so that it can move and be held in a straight line. And clearly the Scotch yoke is going to be attached to this bottom pivot point. I'll glue that on in a minute, <laughs> this bottom pivot point. So as the Scotch yoke moves, it will move that pivot. And of course the Scotch yoke is taking a rotation and changing it into push-pull. So the Scotch yoke is made out of these parts here, and you'll notice that this is a gear with a hole in it, and that's so we can drive the Scotch yoke directly, because the input gear will be right there driving the Scotch yoke. That hole fits in this slot here, and that's what drives the yoke in and out. Now we're going to do one either side, and what that means is when we put the two together, those two holes should be 180 degrees apart from each other, so when one Scotch yoke is pushed in, the other one is pushed out, and we'll reverse that. That's a bit of 8mm bar, about 30mm long, and it goes in the bearings there. Now it will rub unless you actually put 
an eight millimeter washer on. So we stick an eight millimeter washer on, stick that in there, put that one on on that one with its eight millimeter washer, says he, there we go. That goes on there like that. And then we make sure that those two holes are 180 degrees apart. Now, it's a little difficult to do that at this stage. So what you do is leave them with a bit of slack. And when we put the yolks in, then we can twist them until the yolks are offset by each other, one being furthest in, the other being furthest out. And that will give us 180 degrees and then a spot of super glue will hold it in place. The easiest way to fit these is to only fix one of the slide guides on. Slide that in through the slide guide and then put the pivot point in once it's slid in and then put the other slide guide on and hold it down with a spot of super glue. Once it's in, then you have this ring with a notch in it. This will be where the pivot pin goes that connects with the arm here, the lever arm. It connects down the bottom there. It glues onto the end of that once it's in its slide guide. Then we put a pin in it and then that will connect to that pin and we put a cap on it. Right, once we've done that, this is what we get. Now at this bottom point here, if I turn that gear, then you can see that those levers move a very long distance. That distance will change as I pull that slide up because that pivot point is changing. Remember, work in equals work out, so force and distance are what we can play with. As we change the distance, we change the force. So we have essentially done our CVT by doing that, and we get very little movement, as you can see. We've done our CVT, is doing that what we need to do now is turn this push pull back into a rotation and of course for that as I said before we're going to be using this ratchet mechanism now this ratchet mechanism is done as a, another demonstrator so in this form it won't do we need to do a couple of little adaptations to it to make sure that it will work and these are the adaptations right here now I'm going to do a dual sided one so we've got two of them and they have an axle joining them. So if I pull that out, we can see that there is the ratchet gear with an axle, a long axle that will go through. There's the base plate. The base plate has been modified so that it will take this arm and the arm goes onto that slide guide there and then it can slide in and out from the push pull here, turning this back into rotation. There's a cap that goes on it with the gear and that's our output gear. So we make two of those and put them either side so the arms will link with this and push pull and then we'll get a, a rotation back out again. One thing to notice is there's a bearing in here. This is se uh, 17 outside diameter, 9 millimeters inside diameter, 4 millimeters thick. That goes in there to help everything turn. And now all we've got to do is slot all those bits together. And there it is together with both sides of the ratchet. Now research has shown that if you do two ratchets like this, you actually approximate true rotation, which is pretty cool. And there's my output gear right there for interfacing with something else. So the drive cog would go across both of those and that would be the drive and the output is right there after everything's been rectified. Now I have put an arm here just to bring the point out so that I can put this linkage in here. So there's a linkage right there has been put on to link the pivoting arms here to the ratchet mechanism so that when I move that and turn this, <laughs> we're going to get rotation here and I move that up then because I'm changing force and distance, then obviously I'm going to change the force or torque that is on this output in relation to where that arm moves. And that arm can be moved as that spins. And so we've got a continuously variable transmission. Anyway, the whole point of this was to take it from a first principle, that is a problem, an idea how to solve that problem, design the machine, build a model. I mean, this is just a model. So what we would do with this is look seriously at it and how we could simplify it, how we could cram things in together a little more, maybe may overlap things that we haven't overlapped. But this model shows the principle of what we were talking about in the previous video with the actual implementation, how we've gone about designing and building a model. And that's the point of the whole video. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.